Here we're given a table that shows the total distance, including reaction time and deceleration time, that it takes a car traveling at various speeds to come to a complete stop. Use the criteria above to draw a good graph on the grid below. So the first thing we need to understand when drawing our graph is what our horizontal axis represents and our vertical axis. The horizontal axis is always represented by the first row in a table and the vertical axis by the second. So our horizontal is speed in miles per hour. So let's put that on our graph. So we have speed in miles per hour and that's going to label our horizontal axis. Our vertical axis is stopping distance in feet. So let's put that on our vertical. And I'm going to move that just a little bit over. The next thing we want to do is understand the how we need to label our tick marks on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis. So the speed varies from we're starting at zero. We would start at zero speed, zero miles per hour, and goes up to 80. So if I count each of the marks on the graph here, I have 20. There are 20 marks on the graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 20 and divide it into 80. So I'm going to take my 80 over 20 and that is going to give me tick marks of distance 4. So I'm going to put those onto the graph. So if I have 4, 8, 12, 16, then this would be 20. So that's a pretty good way to spread out the data. One, two, three, four, and this gives me 60, four, five, and then 80. Because when we're graphing our data in our table, we want to use as much of the space in the grid that we're given as possible. We don't want to squish everything up over on one side, and we don't want to have it be all squished up on the bottom. So let's take a look at our vertical goes from 0 to 481. So I'm going to call that 500. And if I look at 500 and split that up over 20 tick marks, that gives me tick marks of distance 25. So each one of these is distance 25. So every four of those would be 100. It's really important that when you are making your graph, that the distance between each tick mark on each axis is uniform. In other words, I have to know that the distance between this tick mark, this one, this one, this one, this one is all the same, in this case, four. Same thing on the vertical. This is 25, 50, 75, 100. So the distance this way between each mark does not have to be the same as the distance this way. But on a given axis, the distance between each mark has to be the same. So we're going to 200, 300, 400, and we're going to end up at 500. So that's going to fill our space very well. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video at this point and take your time to put each of these ordered pairs. So 15, 44 would be the first ordered pair. So the input is on top, the output is on the bottom. So go ahead and plot and label. I'm going to label these with letters. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. So go ahead and plot these on the graph, then restart the video and make sure you're on the right track and we'll go from there. So the points are plotted here and they are accurate with the tick marks and their locations on the graph.
with the inputs and outputs for speed and stopping distance. My next question, thing I have to decide, is determine if the points should be connected, if the graph should be continuous, or we should leave them as individual points, which is called discrete. So in this case, when I'm looking at speed, my speed can exist anywhere in this range of data from 0 to 80. So I could have 1.1 miles per hour, I could have 25.8, I could have all of the values that occur on this horizontal axis and used as inputs. My stopping distance then would correspond to points that would line up with what I have here for the other points on the graph. So yes, I do want to connect these. So take a minute and pause the video, connect these points as best you can, and then restart the video and make sure you're on the right track. So what I've drawn here approximately represents the shape of the graph. This is actually called an exponential graph because it's increasing and as I'm traveling in this direction, the outputs for the graph are getting larger and larger, faster and faster. So make sure that when you're finished, you have all of the elements here for a good graph. You've labeled your axes here with the units. Your tick marks are very carefully spread out and identified. You have the same distance between the tick marks on each of your axes and that you plotted and labeled your points and made a decision about whether to connect the points or not.